both grew up in South Carolina mm -hmm. and we met there. We're actually high school sweethearts. And we've been together a while. We've been together longer than we've been apart. Yes. So we had three kids really quickly within four mm -hmm. years. And it was crazy just by nature of having three boys under the age of four. But our story was a little different than a typical parent. All three of them were extremely ill. Food was an issue. Mm -hmm. We had one child who was throwing up 10 to 12 times a day. We had another child who had 30 dirty diapers a day and one who screamed 15 hours a day. And we could not figure out what was wrong with them. And I think for four and a half years, we tried and we tried and we tried and we were drowning and we were overwhelmed and we had no idea what was wrong with them. And we kept going to church in our small group and we were praying for our kids for almost four years. Mm -hmm. And one day, a friend of ours came and said, she worked at the hospital and she said, I came across this rare disease that sounds like what y'all have been talking about for four years. And we looked it up and we knew instantly what our kids had. Right. And from that point, we were able to get a diagnosis and it was a rare disease called eosinophilic esophagitis. I know it's so weird. Say like EOE for short, because it took us like two months to figure out how to even say it. <laughs> but um, we thought at that point, when they got diagnosed with this disease, that life would get easier. But it actually got harder because we had to take away food from them in order to get them well. Yeah, and see, the thing about their disease is it attacks food in their body like an infection. So anytime that they would eat a food um, that their body rejected, it would attack, it would send white blood cells to the esophagus and attack it like it was an infection. So every time they ate something they shouldn't have been eating that we didn't know about, um, they uh, their bodies attacked it like an infection. And so they were sick, they were in pain, um, and we had to figure out those signs and symptoms. Basically what you do is the doctor decides, based on their allergy testing and some other things, what food would bring them the most nutrients. And they also factor in what the kids want to eat. And Sawyer wanted to eat blueberries. Right. And the dietician thought that was a good idea. And so when he got cleared to eat blueberries, that meant he was drinking his formula for his calories and then ate the blueberries to basically see if his body would accept just the blueberries. So for eight weeks straight, he ate blueberries. He had fresh blueberries as his normal food. He had blueberry juice with just one, that one ingredient as his drink and ate frozen blueberries as a treat. And I'll tell you, I just saw a picture the other day that reminded me of it. His entire hands, they just were blue, purple and blue all the time. And we used to call him little boy blue. Mm -hmm. Down the line, our oldest son, he didn't start with blueberries. He actually started with venison, mm -hmm. but blueberries were a food that were also declared safe for him later down the line. That was one of the only common foods that all three of our children could eat. Yep. So it was saving two of our children and it gave two of them hope that they were gonna be able to be normal one day or eat or get calories or just have fun and taste things again besides salt and mm -hmm. ice. We shopped at Whole Foods, it was close to us at the time. And so, you know, you go into Whole Foods and they had organic Dick Vines blueberries. Mm -hmm. And that's where we started. Now currently I am working with Whole Foods, working with, with uh, Fresh Market. I'm working with the Earth Fair and also a lot of local grocery stores that helped me too. And uh, it's a different world when you're in an organic market rather than conventional because when I first started, organic market hadn't even really taken off and it really didn't take off to 1995. When I started in 1980, I didn't know I was the first organic blueberry farmer in the Southeast, but I am. And I'm also the third oldest in the United States. So I've been doing it for a long time and um, it just made sense to me. And now that everybody's looking at organic, um, are you doing it because of the money? Are you doing it because it's the right thing to do? And I can honestly tell anybody that asks me that question that I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. And for us, we noticed that pesticides and chemicals were not just affecting their esophagus, but it was also causing asthma. I don't know that's medically what was going on, but we noticed a difference in them when they ate conventional blueberries and when they ate Dick Bynes blueberries. 
Well, funny thing, I started working at that Whole Foods that we were shopping at mm -hmm. because I needed the discount because <laughs> we had so many special foods we had to buy. And everyone that worked there with me knew that I was dying to meet him because he kept my kids alive. And I just wanted to tell him that he meant something to our family. Right. And so I was back there cooking and I think somebody ran up to me and said, Mr. Bond is here. I was in the back cooking and he was delivering blueberries. Uh, I'd walked in the to Whole Foods grocery store and I was making a delivery and she was looking for me. He was just, you know, taking cartons off a truck and loading them into Whole Foods. And I walk up to him and probably already crying because, you know, I'm always crying and gave him a hug and said, you don't know me, but you saved my son's life. To have, to have that situation again, I'd love to have it over and over again because she didn't want to let go because she wanted to let me know how much she appreciated me growing my fruit, but not only that, being organic. He wasn't just a farmer in Waynesboro, Georgia. He was making a difference in people's lives. And mm. there are these two kids in South Carolina who were alive and thriving and having hope because of what he did day in and day out. Oh, oh my gosh. Hey. 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 Good, so good. good. What's going on? More, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, no kidding. Good, good to see y'all. Well, good to yes. see you. No kidding. We miss y'all being in, uh, around hometown, so yeah. I'm down with coming up here. So. How We're was good. your trip? Oh, it was all right. It was all right. It was good. long. We got, I got in late Friday night, so. Yeah. We're good. Oh, yeah. good. Come on well, in. We have see... some uh, blueberry cobbler. Oh, I, I don't know if you <laughs> like blueberries, oh, but. Yeah. I know we've talked about this before, but you remember we, we had this really tough time moving to Nashville. It took us over seven years. You know, he had the all the job rejections, and... The school was about to start, so I moved up here with the boys by myself before he had gotten a job. So I was single mom in it in Nashville. It was really stressful, and I, I was stressed just with normal life, but also the extra things that we have too. And I walked into Whole Foods, and it was July, so it was still pretty much blueberry season. Right, right. Walked into Whole Foods, and the first thing that I saw was a huge display of your blueberries. <laughs> it made you feel at home. And I was, it was kind of like a God wink, you know, where I went, oh my gosh. I'm all the way in Nashville. I'm alone. I'm stressed. This is really hard. Okay, we can do this. It felt like a sign, you know, you're here. I got you, uh, you know. Yeah, still here. Yeah, still well, here. Good. So well, I'm glad. I tell you, you have given me a perspective when I ride out to the farm. Now I, ha I, see, it from, I see it from a different angle. You just never think that you're going to do something in somebody's life. You know, our job is to grow the stuff and to get it to market. And then what it does after that, we don't, you know, we don't know. Right. And we may never know. But right. in y'all's circumstance, I did. And when you came and hugged me, I, I didn't know. I really didn't know what was going on, but I knew you had tears in your eyes. And I didn't know if somebody had died. Well, I was overwhelmed too because, you know, I love what I'm doing. I don't like what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. Right. There's a vast difference. And when you love what you do, then when something like this happened, I get pretty sentimental. I remember talking to my brother about it. We wanted to have uh, uh, some kind of fruit to grow. Mm -hmm. We just didn't want to do peaches. We had done that, and it yeah. was, you know, we just didn't want to do that. So anyway, I told him I called blueberries, and I think he was as, as elated as I was because he didn't want to do peaches. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, anyway, we, that's how we got into blueberries. And then I think from the perspective of not spraying chemicals, mm -hmm. just kind of always made sense to me mm -hmm. that I just didn't want to, if I could get away with it, just not put any kind of chemical or residue on there. I didn't know that it would might help, but in 1980, I kind of felt like that maybe it might be something down the road the way that we eat in America now, we don't have a relationship with our farmer. We don't know where our food is coming from and our kids don't know a lot about that. And so for us to be able to like meet the person and see how your life is so wrapped around the farm, like we just buy the carton and we're not thinking about the family that's behind right. those blueberries or that chicken or whatever it is that we're getting. And it, it changed our lives too because we wanted that personal relationship. Mm -hmm. We wanted to help our local economy. And we're, we were teaching our kids the same thing. Right. You know, and I love that. We can go out to your farm and get our honey and get yeah. barbecue sauce now and all the things. So, yeah. and, not, and not right out there and see a big chemical truck park. That's right. You right. know what I mean? Yep. Seeing something, kind of, uh, something that's killing bugs and I'm going to put this on my sprayer. I don't have sprayers. Right. Well, I'm glad you have that feel that good about the relationship with, between the farm and the consumer. Right. That's dying. That's a dying thing because we are getting fewer and fewer farmers. The average farmer is 58 years old. Yep. So we mm -hmm. are getting to the point where we need younger, 
women and younger men to get into farming and you know to kind of keep that that kind of going between our faith sustaining us and our community building us up and, and helping us through and our family coming through for us I don't know if we would have made it but that's what community is it doesn't have to be this disease yeah. it can be your blueberry farm how, and that's when the relationship comes back around and why it's so important. Because when you're building relationships with people and things happen, people are there to hold you up. Yeah. But we, we made it. We're strong. But I, I'm not, not to say that we don't have emotional repercussions from all that, because we do. The things that we've seen at such a young age and things that our kids have been through. Also, you know, how do we be good parents to children who are who have a lot of medical trauma? Yeah. Um, it does it does affect them. It really does affect how they grow up and their ability to grieve and, and cry and process. And, and they're different. They're not in school as much as the other kids, mm. you know, and they're always at the hospital and their life is a little bit different. And that's really hard. So as parents, you know, we're not only trying to have a good marriage, we're trying to teach our kids that this is the life they have. And we have to find gratitude and thankfulness in the midst of it. Thank you.